Hi guys, Cheryl Baglioli here with Gel Press, and today I have another Prince to Project video for you. One of the things that we say around Gel Press is no surface is safe. So does it always have to be a piece of paper? Does it always have to be in your art journal? And the answer is no. So today, one of the things that I'm going to play with is how to do prints on a small, not flat surface. So I found these cute little wooden eggs and I'm pretty sure I found them in the dollar spot in Target and that I they just called to me because it's Easter coming up so what a fun project but I want to color these up and I don't want to just paint them because sometimes when you paint them with a brush the brush strokes show up and you know that type of thing so I just want some prints and to be able to do the prints and have smooth surfaces over the whole thing so today my video is going to show you how to do prints with something that's not a flat surface and then I'll come back Saturday and show you my completed little spring project. So stay tuned, grab a cup of coffee, and check it out. So you can see in this first clip that my eggs did start off as raw wood eggs. And I made a video for that showing you how I adjusted them, but somewhere that disappeared. So I'm going to show you in the next clip a repeat of what I did. So you can see here how they started. In the next clip, you'll see that now they're white. I am starting off with a 9 by 11 gel plate mount by joggles.com and my 8 by 10 gel press plate. So you can see that mine is stained but that's not a big deal to me. It still works perfectly fine. I don't have the acetate covers either but if you do like this just throw them away. You don't need them anymore once you receive your gel plate. So I'm going to put it on my plate and I have some shelf liner that I lay underneath of it just to keep it sturdy and that way I know it's not shifting around. Now I'm going to use some white gesso. This is white gesso by the Crafters Workshop and a little bit goes a long way. If you have too much paint on your plate then your eggs are going to slide around so a little bit goes a long way trust me so I'm just gonna put a little bit on here I'm gonna brayer it out see I'm doing a real fine coat clean off the brayer and then just take the eggs and roll a little bit at a time so if you start off just doing like the top half and get it really good and coated and then set it off to dry you can come back and do the bottom half afterwards so I took my time and just made sure to get a good coat of gesso over all my little eggs. So I did the top, then I did the bottom, and I just kind of set them upside down on the tray so that they could dry. But gesso dries really fast, so I didn't have to really worry about making a mess here. And just used up all of that I could. Now because I am using gesso on my gel plate, when I was done, I do want to actually take and wipe that off. So I just used a baby wipe and make sure that I get the gesso off of my plate as clean as possible. And that way it protects my gel plate because gesso can be just a little bit gritty and you don't want to leave something like that. Now I'll leave acrylic paint on here, no big deal, but gesso and mediums, I do clean off my plates. So once my plates were done, now it's time to play. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to be using these interference co colors by DecoArt Media Paint. I love adding these. This, these interference colors give this holographic look to your colors when you add them. So if I add a little bit of interference magenta with a little bit of blue, the color comes out blue on the egg, that's the main color you see, but when you turn it in the light, then sometimes the magenta is, be, you can see a reflection of the magenta that's being picked up too. So it doesn't look like I have much on here, but you can see that a little color goes a long way. And because I did gesso all of my eggs first, I'm getting good, clean, bright colors. So I was really excited about that. And I keep getting these little fuzzy things that are in my 
plate that's in the paint, but I just continued to work. And again, just like we did with the gesso, I'm just doing one half at a time while it's really wet to so make sure that I don't get my fingers all in it. So adding a little bit more paint, getting those little fluffs out of there, and continuing just to do a few layers. And building up, I wanted this real painterly look all over my eggs. So I just kept playing with them and twisting them around, rolling them over, making sure that I get the top. Then I started using my impressibles. So here you can see that I'm using one of the circle one and just pressing it into the color and then running that same egg and it picks up part of the design and then overlaps it when you're rolling it through. So I had some really neat designs that were showing up in these eggs and I just continued to play. So you can see that I'll start mixing different colors and see you can see the little circle prints that are showing up at this point and just continue to work it. Because you're using such a fine thin coat of paint this is drying very quickly so it's not really hurting for me to touch it and continue to work. Now because I am working with interference colors, I do want to clean my plate between each color also because I really don't want to mix a lot of those because then it does start getting really muddy. So I am trying to clean it off and keep those colors crisp and clean. So you can see I'm just taking a baby wipe again, wiping it off, making sure that I also take a paper towel and just dry it real quick because I don't want to dilute the paints and add more colors and just keep playing. So I continued to play with the interference paints and had a good time just trying to find out what would happen if I mix some magenta paint with interference blue or if I mixed interference magenta with ultramarine blue to see what would happen and I got some really neat results from this. I use things around the house just to create texture like this little roll of twine here and this picked up and showed the print when I rolled the egg through so you can see that that's going to show up here. So I really love the way that my eggs turned out. I hope that you'll join me Saturday and I'll show you how I finish this project and have these cute eggs for Easter. You can see a little peek here. So thanks for watching.